So, Nathan Jones to Southampton. It was going to happen at some point when he was going to get interest from a Premier League club. You just don't do extremely well at a club like us and not attract attention. It was going to happen at some point. Of course, we've obviously got history with Nathan Jones leaving Luton halfway through a season, which isn't ideal. But in today's video, I'm just going to give you guys my thoughts over the... Well, it's not even rumours. These are actual things that are actually happening at the moment, which is Southampton have actually approached Luton in a respectful way and asked to speak to Nathan Jones. And I want to say fair play to Southampton for doing it respectfully. You know, you've seen it recently with certain clubs that they just don't go about it the correct way. So fair play for Southampton for doing that. But yeah, let's get into this video about my thoughts over the move. So do I think he will leave Luton? It's an attractive job. Southampton is a an attractive job. Better training facilities, you know, bigger stadium. The attraction's there. They've been in the Premier League for a number of years. And he's going to have a lot more money than he, he would do at Luton. So there's a lot of attraction there. The players which he's got at Southampton, if he does go Nathan Jones, that is, he's got, he's got a young squad. And that will kind of suit Nathan Jones. He can get the best out of the players. There's not many players in that Southampton team, which I would say have egos. So I do think they will work really hard for him. And in, in those, in, you know, regarding that, it kind of is an attractive job for Nathan Jones because compared to the Stoke job, it kind of didn't work out for him because there were too many players with egos. He tried to change things too quickly over there as well. And I just don't think the players over there were willing to work as hard as the current Luton squad did, you know. And that was the massive difference between the two. Whereas at Southampton, with the youngsters there, I do think they will work for him. I do think they will get results and they will listen to him. It's just whether or not I think Nathan Jones will try and change things too quickly at Southampton. If he does do that, then yeah, I can see it going a little bit like it did at Stoke where results just weren't coming and he tried to change things too quickly but at Luton he has the right people around him as well he needs to have the right people around him at Southampton if he doesn't he won't succeed he just won't so if he has the right people around him he doesn't change things too quickly then I do see him being successful and I do see him keeping Southampton up if certain things goes his way if they don't then i just don't see it happening and if they do get relegated from, um, from the premier league southampton that is and they do decide to keep nathan jones then they've got an ideal manager for the championship i guess but it's yeah there's a few question marks on whether or not nathan jones would get you know certain things like going going his way but i'm a little bit unsure over that but yeah it's a little bit frustrating because it is happening halfway through the season it is an attractive offer and i do think you know if certain things go his, his way then at, then he's going to get the job at southampton but the problem is at clubs like southampton although they gave ralph a lot of time is whether or not he would get the time himself would he get enough time to change things around he will get the january transfer window as well so he will be able to bring in his own players in and what goes in his favor as well this is a little bit different where we have a winter break he's going to have time with the current squad and i'm not being funny i'm not disrespecting southampton at all he's going to have players that are not going to go to the world cup you know there's not going to be many players from southampton side that's going to go to the world cup compared to other premier league sides so he's going to get an opportunity to work with those players probably the most out of other managers in the premier league to get the best and find what works best and you know get to know the players that's important that is just so important if it was just a regular normal season it's completely different but he has a winter break so in 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 that way it also benefits Luton because there are plenty of managers available um, for us to go and look at and try and bring to the club and I would be happy with certain choices which we would bring in. Sean Dice being probably my number one pick, but whether or not we could afford him is a different story. But yeah, it's if he's going to go, he needs to go during this break in my eyes because if he goes two months later, it's just frustrating. If he goes now, it's different. And I feel like losing week, you know, the season isn't over, you know. 
if he goes two months late, oh, I, little, I have a few concerns because maybe certain managers will go elsewhere. We may miss the opportunity. But right now, there's definitely managers out there which I think Luton could attract. Hopefully, Sean Dice would be one of them. you got Neil Critchley, who was the former Blackpool boss who went to work with Stephen Gerrard as his assistant manager. Well, you could argue Stephen Gerrard could be a potential shout, but I don't think so in my eyes. You then have, you know, the Ipswich boss, uh, McKenna. You then have the Plymouth Argyle boss as well. So there are managers out there who could do it. You've got Mark Warburton as well. I don't think Chris Wilder would take the Luton job, but, you know, there are managers, good managers who have proven that they can do it, you know, available for us to, you know, approach and try and bring into the club. We can't do what we did before. We need to get the next uh, appointment correctly. I am holding my light and my phone is, my arm is really hurting me at the moment. So I need to switch um, my light about. But yeah, this is the problems when you're trying to record in the car. But yeah, there are plenty of managers available who could do a good job at Luton. But the problem is when we're trying to attract a manager to Luton, the budget has to be right. You know, we can't obviously afford 15 million pound worth of players in. So they're going to have to buy in what we do. They're going to have to, you know, everything needs to be right. And that's why I think Sean Dice is just perfect because he knows the restrictions and he had that at Burnley. So it's nothing really changes in that sense when coming to Luton. So that, that's why Sean Dice would be my number one pick. But Nathan Jones, he could say no still. He's still going to take charge of the game against Stoke. <laughs> of course, it is against his former side. But yes, against Stoke, he could. Um, yeah, that could be his last Luton game. In terms of style of football, I know a lot of Southampton fans want to know what style of football he would play. Obviously, at the start of his, well, his first spell at Luton, he played a diamond, very attacking formation, which got us, you know, back-to-back -back promotions. And in the Championship, in the first season, we did play a diamond. Um, and then under Nathan Jones, that's what kept us up. And then in the second season, we played like a 4-2-3-1. And then in the third season, we transferred to a three at the back system, which we've carried on playing in this current season. A lot of fans, including myself, are kind of wanting us to switch to a back four. Um, and then because we feel like at the moment, the personnel in the midfield is just not correct. Um, so playing a back four, we feel like we are a much better side. But he's being a little bit stubborn in that sense. He's also, in his interviews recently, he's kind of hit out at the fans, which he needs to be careful, Nathan Jones, because we have forgiven him. Well, some of us have forgiven him. Um, so he has to watch it because some of the stuff he is saying um, is a little bit, you know, borderline disrespectful at times. But, you know, look, at the end of the day, I can't fault him if he leaves to go to Southampton. I can't. You know, he deserves an opportunity at the Premier League. He's done success. He's done extremely well. At Stoke, if you're going to judge him on what he's done at Stoke, I wouldn't because the last five or six managers who have been the manager of Stoke have failed. They just have failed. You know, whatever's happening at Southampton, and at Stoke City, I mean, it's just, yeah. <laughs> Something's like really badly wrong there. Alex Neil can't even have a good start there. So something is, yeah, something's just wrong at that football club. But he did try and change things really quickly when Nathan Jones when he went there but I feel like he's learned I do feel like he has learned and I do think he came back to Luton as a much better manager you know you just don't get playoffs with our budget with the team which we've got if you're if you're a poor manager and I do think he deserves a, an opportunity you know at being a Premier League boss so if he goes he goes if he stays fantastic you know but if he is going to go he needs to go now because then we've got an opportunity to bring in a manager who could do a good job. He may take his backroom staff with him. Who knows? But at the moment, if he's going to go, go now, Nathan. Just go now because then we've got an opportunity ourselves to bring in the right man. We've got time then. And then that new boss will then have time to bring in his own sort of players. But now Southampton, they would have paid a good hefty fee if he does go because he, had, he signed a five-year deal. So, yeah. Those are my thoughts on the Nathan Jones um, going, potentially going to Southampton. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section of this video. And yeah, if you haven't already, make sure you check out my match preview. I did pre-record that on the Sunday. So yeah, those are my thoughts heading into the Stoke game as well. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.